Well, hello, hello, beautiful peoples from all over the world. We're going live on Instagram. This ain't YouTube. This is IG Instagram. And we are going to, oh, what are we going to do? We're going to go to chapter 29 of 1 Samuel. So if you got your Bibles with you, come on in. Join the fun. Hello, Teresa. Hello, Alice. Hello, Lynn. Hello, my Jerusalem friend from London. And Trujillo and Teresa and Wildflower and Jill and... Uh, Jim and uh, Teen Teen, how y'all doing all? Blessings. G-Friend, how you doing? Dr. Herman, how you doing? God's blessings on all of you guys. Blessings upon blessings. Yes, 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 yes. God is good. Mama Bear's here. And we're all going to be good, right? Yeah, Mama Bear's in the house. Virginia is here. And all kinds of peoples. I can't read them all so fast, so fast, so fast. Uh, God's blessings on all of y'all. Y'all ready for this? There's Miss Chris. Um, and Anne Ray and X39, well, 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 blessings, blessings upon blessings to you. God is good. He's good all the time. No matter what your circumstances, no matter what your tears, no matter what your fears, God is good. And he's going to provide for you in the name of Jesus Christ. He is going to provide. He is going to protect. Now you got to, you got to let go of all the fears because God didn't give you a sense of fear. He didn't give you no uh, depression. God has given you power. He's given you the Holy Spirit. He's given you goodness. He's given you mercy. Uh, and, and the reason why us Christians cannot grasp that is because we ain't grasping this. That's all it is, baby. That's all it is. I'm serious. I'm telling you the truth. Nothing but the truth. So y'all can join us on YouTube, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, under Dr. Samuel Kojiglanian. That's, uh, if y'all don't know, it's under Dr. Samuel Kojiglanian. Uh, that's YouTube on Mondays and Tuesdays at, uh, what time? 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And we go live on IG on Thursdays, 5 p.m. And you know, because you're right here joining. What's up, Rick? How you doing? What's up, Michael? How you doing? God's blessings on all y'all. Joy, joy, what's up? Okay, so now we're going to go to 29 of 1 Samuel. There's a big war brewing. Ain't that a trip? There's a big war brewing all over the world right here, right now. There's over, what, 180 skirmishes and wars that are happening in the world today. That's crazy. 180. And you know what the bottom line is? Hatred. Uh, that Jealousy. I want this. I want that. And, and people ain't happy with what they got because they got to get and get, grab other people's. Or they got to sabotage others. You know, they, all, they want to be only successful. And that ain't only in the world. That's also in the church. Shame, shame. But that's what's happening also in churches. And God is about to reveal um, all the leaders, not uh, uh, whether they're leaders of the uh, in the world, whether they're leaders in uh, cities, whether they're leaders in the counties, whether they're leaders in mega churches, wherever they may be, God this year, in the next day too, in this month, uh, it's about to reveal and expose those who have been using His name. And those who have been uh, acting innocent, but have been doing awful things, he's about to expose them and drop them. You watch. You watch. That's prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ. You watch. You wait and watch and see. Yes, yes, yes. Be sure the sins going to find you out. Okay, here we go. 29, uh, David. David, David, David is going to be the second king of Israel. But he's in a mess. And um, you, you sometimes wonder... How long does it take for somebody to find themselves in a huge mess? Yeah, I mean, I, I think everybody's different. It could be one month, two months. To, for David, it took 16 months. He's in a big mess. He's gone to the Philistine territory because he's been chased like a dog, hunted like some of the leaders in America want to do to others, hunted. Um, they, they, he's being hunted uh, by Saul, his own people, right? He's being, he want, they want to take him out. And uh, Saul is jealous as jealous can be. And um, so David is on a run. And he's like, I can't do this anymore. So what does David do? Here's our uh, map. Huh. Okay, so um, y'all know this map, right? This is like the uh, Mediterranean Sea. Uh, and then this is the Sea of Galilee, the Jordan River coming down. And then there's the Dead Sea. And this side of it is Israel. From north all the way to south. And this right here is Jerusalem. And um, about five miles south is Bethlehem. And then you have... Um, all this is the Philistine territory. And then uh, David runs from Israel and he goes to the Philistine territory. Now, 
now there's a big war. The big war is up here in Jezreel in the north. The Philistines are attacking and Saul's got to be there to fight. And here's Mount Carmel where uh, Elijah got rid of 850 prophets of Baal and Asheroth. And so th this is also the place of Megiddo. It's called the Valley of Jezreel or the Battle of Jezreel. And it's also the Battle of Megiddo where the last war will be fought. Uh, according to, uh, where is that? Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 through 15. And so uh, so David goes up here and he's going to fight, not with Israel, but he's going to fight with the Philistines against Israel. Now, how long does it take for someone to mess up? For David, it took a good 16 months. And so uh, when the Bible is not touched, when when there is play with God, when there is like nonchalantness with God, uh, when we're listening to music we're not supposed to be listening to or lo looking at movies or films we're not supposed to be looking at, it changes our heart. Now, it doesn't change God's heart for you and me. He still loves you and me. It changes our hearts towards God and His rules and regulations and laws. And our love for Him diminishes. And when our love for Him diminishes, the sin in us increases. Y'all get that? When our love for Christ diminishes, our tendencies for sin increases. Oh my. Oh my, that was from the Holy Spirit. Uh, that was not planned, but that's what happens, okay? So it took David 16 months. He was killing and slaughtering people, taking uh, all kinds of gold, silver, uh, raiments, um, and he was just taking everything out. He was taking all the people. And he was telling Achish the king, because he was hanging out in the Philistine land, remember? He was telling Achish the king, one of the kings of the Philistines, one of the princes of the Philistines, that he's been just, oh, tearing down Israel. Not true. He wasn't. He was telling, tearing down the Philistine land, but he was not telling the truth. So, now, David's going to go up, and let's see what happens with the Phil He's going to fight with the Philistines against Israel. This is going to be the second king of Israel going to fight against Israel. This is messed up. This is how... Uh, you know, I, I always say that you want to listen to uh, specific music, like maybe country music. Um, in a matter of no time, um, you write this down. There is going to be adultery somewhere, somehow, whether it's in the mind or whether it's real. You you watch. You watch my words. You mark my words. That's how serious I am about God's kids acting like the world. And when you listen to what the world gives you and listen to what Hollywood gives you, who brainwashes you, then you become like them. It, it, there's just no, and, and the Bible is like, you know, set aside, or you go to church and do one of these and light a candle, or you go to church and ha ha ha, sing, 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 jump, 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 and go, that was a blessing, and then go and do what you want to do. That ain't going to work out, baby. It ain't going to work out. It's just not going to work out. It's, it's, um, it's time for you and me to get real and to get serious because the time is so short. Jesus is coming back. It's time for you and me to get real, get serious, okay? Let's go. Hello, everybody that's coming in. Ortiz, how you doing? Cariso, how you doing? Carrie, how you doing? And that was uh, Aunt, I think, Auntie, how you doing? Blessings. Okay, so now in 29-1, now the Philistines gathered to, to together other armies to Apec, and that's up north where Jezreel is. And the Israelites pitched a, a fount, and the Israelites pitched by a fountain which is in Jezreel. So we saw that way up north, uh, just um, east of Mount Carmel and just west of the Sea of Galilee, where Megiddo is. And then in verse two, and the lords of the Philistines passed on by the hundreds and by the thousands, but David and his men passed on uh, in the rear ward with Achish. And so now you got five lords of the Philistines. I, I don't know if y'all remember this, but you know, you have the Philistines and um, where were they? We have Gath, we have uh, Gaza, uh, the, you know, the Gaza Strip today also, the Ashkelon, the Ashdod, and um, there's one more. Um, there, it's Ekron. Ekron is it. Okay, so you got Gath, uh, Ash, um, Ashkelon, Ashdod, and um, Gaza, and Ekron. So those are the five big cities or princesses of the Philistine. They're all coming up. They're all going to go against Saul. They're all going to get beat up. And remember, Saul was told he's about to die. 
in 28. He went to the witch of Endor, and we're not supposed to mess, mess with witchcraft or sorcery or horoscopes or tarot cards or anything that is involved with witchcraft. And I recently heard there is a Christian Christian Ouija board. There is no such thing, loved ones, as a Christian Ouija board. It's a satanic Ouija board that has the word Christian on it, okay? That's all there is to it. There ain't no such thing. So if you're like, oh, there's a Ouija board that's Christian. No, it ain't. There's a satanic Ouija board that's called Christian, okay? Y'all get that? Y'all get that, okay? Or So now, the world's trying to fool people. World's trying to fool. Obviously, David was fooled. If you asked him five years before, do you think you, as the second king of Israel, uh, one uh, one day to be, would be fighting against Israel with the Philistines? You'd be on the side of the Philistines? He'd say, absolutely not. Looky, look. Looky, look. It takes a little while. Uh, this is a big warning for you and me. It's a wake-up call for you and me. It can happen to anybody. No man, no woman is free of this. you got to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. And it's not by your might. And it's not by your power. But it's by the Spirit of the living God. So you got to know the Spirit of the living God. And that's why we're here together. So we'll know Him. So we'll be putting on the armor of the living God. So we may be able to fight against the enemy who's attacking us day in, day out. And going crazy or just trying to tear us down. No, no. We're going we're gonna to fight. We're going to fight with the Lord. Amen. This ain't just the sword, uh, like a, a physical sword. This is the sword. It's called the Bible of Jesus Christ. That's how we fight. And so now they go up to Jezreel and the lords of the Philistines uh, went up. And, and so did David. He goes to the rear guard with Achish. He's one of the, the kings or the princes. And he's been with him for 16 months. And Achish loves him. Loves, loves, loves him. Okay. And so in verse 3, then said the princes of the Philistines, what do these Hebrews here, well, what are they doing here? Uh, you know, you got the four other kings or four other princes. They're like, what in the world is David doing there? I mean, the boy, you know, everybody knows David. I mean, he was like the one who took down Goliath. If you, if you take down Goliath, you're going to be known for life, who you are. And they can identify him. They don't have Facebook. They don't have Instagram. They don't have YouTube. They don't have Twitter. They don't have X. X. They don't got nothing. But they can identify David because of how many battles he's fought and uh, especially how he took down Goliath. They know who he is. And, and they're like, what is, these, what is he and all these Hebrews doing here on our side? This doesn't even make sense to me. Uh, all the leaders would say of the Philistines. And Achish said to the princesses of the Philistines, is, this, uh, is not this David, the servant of Saul, the king of Israel? Yes. Which has been with me these days, 16 months, or these years, and I found no fault in him since he fell to me. He came to me. He deserted to me um, uh, to this day. I found no fault in him. He's good. I can vouch for him. Okay, I know we're Philistines. I know I'm Philistine. I know we're the enemy of Israel. And I know he, David, uh, took down Goliath. I know he, David, is Saul's servant. I know he, David, fought against us. But man, he's been with us for 16 months. He's good. I'm telling y'all, he's good. Whoa. And then, in verse 4, and the princes of the Philistines were angry with Achish. They're like, are you out of your mind? Is, is you been sleeping? Are you on Ambien? You on Prozac? What is wrong with you? You smoking? Like weed? What is wrong with you, boy? Yeah. They're not happy. <laughs> and the princes of the Philistines were angry with him. And the princes of the Philistines in verse 4 said to him, Make this fellow return. Get his behind out of here. He's not going to stay. He's not going to do this. Get him out. That he may go again to this place which you have appointed him and let him not go down with us to battle. So he, he's not going to come with us in battle. I don't care what you say. I don't care how much you vouch. I don't care what, what you got in you. He's not going to go with us. We're not going to allow this man to come and fight with us. You don't understand his background. And they go deeper in saying this in verse 4. Lest in the battle 
be at an adversary to us, for wherewith should he reconcile himself to his master? Should it not be with the heads of these men? So, like he, they're saying, look, in the middle of the battle, he can just whoo -hoo, change his mind, flip on us, and say, okay, now I'm going to try to find favor with Saul. I'm going to do Saul a favor, and then I'm going to uh, turn around and, and beat these Philistines like he's done in before. They're like, are you crazy, bro? He can change his mind in a split second. He, he changed his mind from an Israelite to become a Philistine. He can surely change his mind from becoming a Philistine to an Israelite. What is your deal? <laughs> oh my goodness! They are not happy with him. And then in verse 5, um, it says, Is this not David of whom they sang one to another in dances, saying Saul slew his thousands and David his ten thousands? My goodness, that song I told you was the number hit, number one hit song uh, on all, all the charts. Even on the Philistines chart, it was number one. They had heard that Saul had killed his thousands. David had killed his ten thousands. That's what got Saul so agitated and angry and wanted to kill David. And now these Philistines are like, like Akish, what's up with you, bro? Uh, this man, he killed ten thousands. Not just ten thousand, but ten thousands. He's going to go after us. Get rid of him. And Akish called David and um, I'm just going to let y'all know that I'm not going to let you know what Achish said today. Because we're going to stop right there. And we're going to find out what Achish said to David, what the Philistines had said to him. What is Achish going to say to David? Is he going to go against the Philistine kings? Or is he actually going to tell David that he needs to leave? We don't know until next, um, until next, next time. But I do want to tell you this in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It says, and do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. Now, uh, now, have you seen people on the pulpits looking like the world? H have you seen it? Have you seen them acting like the world? Have you seen them be like the world? If you haven't, you're about to be exposed today, tomorrow, the next day to all these people that are leaders that are acting all innocent, whether they're in church or out of church, whether they're leaders of a world, leaders of cities, leaders of states, leaders of a, of a whole country, whatever it may be, these people acting all innocent, you're going to see them being exposed one by one. Okay? Now, how do you prevent that from occurring? How do you and I prevent ourselves from going in the mainstream of this world looking like, acting like, being like, and are like, or are, period? Like this world. Okay, well, you got to go to Romans like David did that. Okay, he did that. It was a big mess up for him. In, in Romans 12 too, it says, Do we Be not conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may know what God's will is, His good, perfect, and uh, honest will, true will. So now, the only way... You and I got to know God's will is to be in the Bible and to go by the Bible and not go by Bollywood, Hollywood, uh, Entertainment Tonight, or whatever it might be on the radio. <laughs> like, oh, I got to hear it. I got to hear it. Okay, go ahead and hear it, but it's going to affect you. Well, I only listen to the music because the music is cool. The music going in your brain, in your soul, and I'm trying to protect you in the name of Jesus. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to get you and me to stay away from what David did for 16 months because it leads to many grave issues and sins and breaks down families and this world. Hmm. So now, don't be conformed to this world. How do you get then transformed by the renewing of the mind? The only way to be transformed is by the Word of God. I, I challenge you, challenge, challenge, challenge you to get into the Word of God. Get into it. You're like, it's boring. It's not boring. It is not boring. It's fun. I mean, we got like uh, craziness going on here. This was not boring going over five verses. No, uh-uh. It was good. It was fun. We enjoyed it together. Okay, so now... That's one thing, right? And and uh, I, I want to go to, um, you know, in Matthew 5.16, it says, Let your light shine uh, wherever you go so that people may glorify your God. So we either shine the light of the world or we shine the light of Jesus Christ. Now, you got to make up your mind what you want to do. Because if you shine the light of Jesus Christ, people are going to see it. 
And you may be persecuted for it because they hate God, they hate you, and it's prophecy, according to the book of John, that they hate Christ's followers, okay? Why do they not make uh, fun of anybody else, any other religion except, uh, except Christians? Because they hate Christians because it's the truth, the truth. Now, there are many Christ followers, quote unquote, that don't act like it and they give people a bad name. They give Christ a bad name. May that not be said of you and me ever, ever. Don't break down on me. Don't break down. Shine your light. Shine the light of Jesus. He's given you a light. You know that song. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Well, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Yeah, and this little light of mine ain't mine. This little light of mine is Jesus' light. Your light is Jesus' light. Don't take the light of the world, because that is not light. That's darkness. Shine the light of Jesus Christ. You know, in the First Corinthians, it's in ten twelve. It says that if any man stand, let him take heed lest he fall. Let him take heed lest he fall. So you and I got to take heed. And you're like, oh yeah, I went to church um, six months ago. I'm cool. No, no, no. Take heed now. Take heed tomorrow. Take heed the next day. Take heed every day so that we may not fall every day. That means the word of God, baby. That means the word of God. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. It's good. It's good. It's good. You know, I don't know what to start. Start in the book of Psalms. It's good for you. Oh, yeah. The, chapter one. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of the mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. Bam. Day and night. He is like a tree planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, whose leaves do not wither whatsoever he does. Prospers. Mm. You want prosperity? Get in the Word. I didn't say that. The Word of God just said it. It's in Psalm 1. You can read it. You got problems with it. You can fight God against it. That, uh, you know, not me. That's the Word of God. You want healing? It's in Proverbs chapter 4. My son, pay attention to my words. Uh, uh, keep them close to your eyes. Keep them in the, your ear. Put them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to their whole body. Come on. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. But we got to take heed. Lest, 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 lest we fall. I mean, there's so many Christ followers um, in pornography. And pornography ain't okay. It's an addiction. And I pray right now, those who are listening in the, uh, wherever you may be, you might be listening now, you might be listening later. I, I break the chains of pornography in your life. I rebuke those demonic forces that have you. They've got you by the neck. They've got you life. They've got your breath. They've got you, everything about you. Lord Jesus, by the blood of the Lamb, spill your blood on these people and break those chains on these precious people. Hallelujah. You're free. You're free. You're set free. Amen. 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 Oh, my, my. Okay, so um, First Peter, no wonder the Holy Spirit had me stop right there because there were things to say, huh? Yes, 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 there were things to say. Okay, so now in First Peter chapter 5, verse 8, it says, Be sober and vigilant. Now, you you got to be sober, y'all. We, we're not talking about we ain't going to get into drugs and alcohol and weed and all that stuff. That When uh, people are on alcohol, drugs, and weed, they are not sober. Be sober and be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. And, and then that's the trick right there. When we are not sober, the enemy gets us. So I'm encouraging you to stand. I'm encouraging you to put on the helmet of salvation. I'm encouraging you to put the breastplate of righteousness because that's what Jesus has done for you. He's given you righteousness. He loves you. That's why he's protecting you. And then he's got you the shield of faith. And, and he gives us the sword to fight with, which is the Bible. How did Jesus fight Satan? He didn't say, smack you upside. Although he did on the cross. And uh, definitely during the resurrection, Jesus slapped him upside. But, but um, it was the word. It says, Jesus said, it is written, right? It is written. We've got to know the word. And I'm sorry to say, um, uh, most, I don't know, maybe 95. 95% of Christ's followers are either anorexic in the word or anemic in the word. 
Got anemic? Get a transfusion. Here's your transfusion right here. That's it. That's why you join. That's why you join. That's why we get together. So we don't become anemic. You feel me, y'all? We don't become anemic. Yes, yes, yes. The world ain't going to get you. They're, gonna not, they're not going to help you. They want to devour you. Devour. People who worship Satan. Satan doesn't love you. He wants to use you as a pawn and chew you and spit you out. And when he spits you out, you spit into hell. He don't want you. He wants you to suffer with him in hell. But Christ died for you. Because he wants you in heaven to have eternal life. All eternity with him. So, loved ones, we got to take heed. We can't pull a David and go to the Philistine camp. We can't pull a David and stay there 16 months. We can't pull a David and go fight against uh, uh, God's people. We, we're not even fighters. We, we, if you want to fight, you fight with prayer. And there are people who fight, and uh, you know God has given every individual a certain gift. But you want to fight for real? Fight in prayer. Yeah, victory coming, victory coming your way in the name of Jesus Christ. Victory coming. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we got packed red blood cells coming your way. Uh-huh. One unit, two units. How many units you need? Huh? Yeah, we'll type and cross. Type and cross is Jesus Christ and his, his blood is pure. And if you're an A or a B or you're an AB or an O, it don't matter. The blood of Jesus is going to set you free. And so if you ain't got that freedom, come to him right now. Say, Lord, 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 I've been in the Philistine camp. Oh, my, my. I've been in the Philistine camp and I didn't even know it. I had no idea. And I'm messed up and I, everything I, I thought was wrong, now I think is right. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. I come to the cross as I am. I need to be cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Lord, for cleansing me. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for pouring your pure blood all over me. And right now, I know all the dirt is coming off of me and all the righteousness of God is in me. And I am the righteousness of God in Christ. And I know the Holy Spirit's in me. And He's going to lead me. He's going to teach me. He's going to keep me sober. He's going to keep my mind fresh. He's going to transform my mind. And I'm going to get into the Bible. And I'm going to study. And I'm going to love you more and more, more and more. And I'm not going to fight against God no more. And I'm not going to fight against God's people. I am going to win this race. I'm going to run it. And I'm going to win this race in the name of Jesus Christ. And one day, I'm going to go to heaven. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Now that was fun. <laughs> God bless you. God keep you. God shine his face upon you, loved ones. Yeah, right about now. It's about 530 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Yes, that's right. We got to go to CTN, Christian Television Network, and go to the Southwest Florida Channel. Southwest, Southwest Florida Channel. And uh, check it out. We're studying the book of Revelation. God's blessings on you. I love you all. Be well. Bye-bye.